receivable. You, you already know about accounts receivable, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You also know about accounts payable. Okay, you know about inventory. So are these uh, current item or fixed item, long-term item? Sir, inventory is a long-term item, sir. No, 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 inventory is a uh, current asset. Yeah, current asset. Accounts payable is a current asset. Accounts payable is a current liability. Yes. yes. Current asset. So, yeah, yeah, right. So these current asset and liabilities management, cash management, cash. Uh, so these, uh, these current items having maturity one year or less uh, are very important to manage. You, know, you need separate management skill for these items. So that is called management of short-term assets and liabilities. That is also part of the business finance or corporate finance. Then I have already mentioned about share market, the financial market. You know, uh, uh, what is the price and return analysis, market efficiency and behavioral finance analysis, uh, management and regulation of financial institution, and that those are related to capital market or financial market. And investment and portfolio management, as I have already said, analyzing the value of stock and bond, share and bond, okay, uh, the trend, whether the trend is going upward or downward, whether the market is bullish or bearish, okay, and uh, uh, selecting the security, selecting the share and bond where you have to invest, structuring and managing the investment portfolio. So these are the investment and portfolio management. So uh, I have actually uh, mentioned these three, corporate finance, capital market, and investment and portfolio management here, but I have just detailed it out here. Hmm. Any question out of this? Anybody no, has any question? Now, uh, we need to know about the career scope in finance. If you become uh, specialized in finance discipline, then what could be your career? Okay, you can have two types of career. Number one, career in financial services industry. Financial services industry. Okay, career in financial services industry. So what do we mean by financial services industry? bank provides financial service insurance company provides financial services leasing company provides financial services microcredit uh, institutions provides financial services do you agree or not yes sir yes sir okay. those organizations actually provide financial services so uh, what we are discussing now, we are discussing about the career scope. You know, what will be your career if you become specialized in finance? Okay, if you learn finance, if your major is finance, if your uh, skill development is focused on finance, okay, then one uh, way of the career is to become uh, any type of any type of manager in the financial services industries like banking. Uh, like real estate finance, like insurance company, investment and portfolio management companies, uh, okay, personal financial planning service providers. So you can become uh, any type of manager in this kind of organizations, like marketing manager of a bank, human resource manager of a bank. Okay, so uh, both the HR uh, uh, major or finance major can become the HR manager of a bank. Hmm. So this is how you can think. So that is one way of developing your career in finance. That means working in any kind of financial services industry. Another way is to become the financial manager of any type of organization. It can be, uh, it can be a, what should I say, food industry, food company, or it can be a power related company. It can be engineering company. Uh, it can be, um, it can be educational institution. You know, every type of organization uh, needs the finance manager. So this is another way of uh, developing your career. So one is becoming any type of manager in the financial services industry. And the, another one is becoming the finance manager of any type of industry. 
Do you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, usually the first topic is not so interesting. You know, I, I can guarantee that you will feel a little bore, uh, you know, while we complete the introduction part. But this is also important, you know, give a little effort, you know, to keep your concentration. So if you become the financial manager of any type of organization, what can be your type of job? You know, probably you will develop a financial plan, how much money we will we'll need in, in the upcoming period and how much we'll spend preparing budget, uh, selecting the customer to give credit, you know, whether the customer will be able to re, uh, return our money or not, evaluating the large expenditure, that means whether we will develop a new factory building or not, you know, making this kind of decision, raising money, as I have said, whether we should take loan from this bank or that bank, whether we should take loan, loan or we should invite more partners to invest in the business. Okay, all these decisions belong to the financial manager. Okay, these are some typical names of the position of the uh, finance graduate you know, when they become, <clears throat> when they catch up their career, financial analyst or capital expenditure manager, project finance manager, crash manager, credit analyst or manager, pension fund manager, foreign exchange manager, you know, these are the typical title of position you might hold, okay? Now, another thing is, if you plan to become an accountant, or if you plan to become a marketing manager or human resource manager, do you still need to learn finance? The answer is yes. Why? Because, Payroll. you know, yeah, because if you want to become a human resource manager, uh, HR manager, you have to, you know, make the recruitment decision or the promotion decision or what kind of other decision, compensation decision. All these decisions involve financial consequences. Am I right or wrong? Right, sir. Why? Because if you recruit more people, you will have to pay the salary and that is definitely money. Now you have to think whether you will get the money or not. Okay, if you want to promote people, you have to give higher salary. You, if you want to compensate, uh, you know, the people, motivate the people, then again, you need to think about the cost of the higher compensation and benefit of the higher compensation. So if you do not know the basic skills, basic foundation of finance, then your human resource decisions might become wrong. Same thing for the marketing managers. You know, if you want to become a marketing manager, again, the product, you know, the price, promotion, et cetera, et cetera, all decisions will have financial consequences. It will involve some cost and it will also generate some financial benefit. So you have to find the gap between the cost and benefit and then make the final decision. So you have to have uh, the basic idea of finance, no matter what is your job, okay? That will improve your decision-making skill, okay? Even if you don't, if you, even if you want to become, uh, you know, uh, become jobless, still you need to know basic finance. Why? Because even if you are a jobless, you need to make personal financial decision. You need to collect fund for your food and you have to manage the fund to allocate, uh, uh, you know, across the days uh, to uh, to get your food, your shelter, your clothing, and all these basic needs. Okay, so financial, you know, learning a bit finance will help everyone. So, have you got the idea about finance? Hmm? Very brief idea. These are actually not necessary for you, maybe for an advanced course in finance. I will uh, share another slide for that.
Okay, let me uh, let me show you something that you are familiar with. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Current assets. Then what else? Tell me before I write. Current liabilities. Long term debt. Common equity. Total. liabilities and stakeholder equity. equity and these two sides will be equal right so what is the name of this thing balance sheet hmm? balance this sheet a, balance sheet yeah this is a balance sheet this is a balance sheet right so what we will try to uh, see now is um, oh it lost it is lost sorry l plus e i'm writing in short now current asset fixed asset Current liabilities, long term debt, uh, equity. Okay. So it is total asset, it is liability plus equity. So this is the balance sheet, right? So we can actually show that uh, how the activities of the finance people, the financial manager, is related to this balance sheet. As I have said, Collection of fund, okay, source of capital is related to how much to borrow, to borrow, and how much to collect from owner. That is equity, right? So how much to borrow is long-term debt like you're taking loan from the bank or issuing bond. Do you understand that or not? Hmm? Yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, uh, if, if a business organization borrow from the bank, that is uh, for a long period of time, like 10 years or five years, that is long-term debt. So that is how much to borrow. How much should the company borrow? Okay, a again, how much should it be taken from the owner of the business? Okay, that is equity. So these two, this portion is actually called, uh, this is related to sourcing of fund. Okay, this is related to source of fund. Do you understand? This is related to source of fund. Of fund. So we call it capital structure. We call it capital structure. That means how much capital has come from borrowing and how much capital has come from the owner's money. Now, another portion is fixed asset. Okay. How much to invest in which asset? Huh. This portion is the utilization of fund. Utilization 
of fund. It has a name called capital budgeting. Okay. And another portion, short-term asset and short-term liability, current asset and current liability. Okay. This is called uh, managing short term asset and liabilities. This is called working capital management. Working capital management. Okay. So we can see that we have basically three, uh, three components of financial decision. One is the capital structure. Okay, that is number one, from where we need to collect fund. Number two, capital budgeting. And number three, working capital management. So can you tell me what is capital budgeting? What is about capital budgeting? You know, give me the wrong answer, no problem. I want a wrong answer from you, if, if, but give me some answer. You know, if, even if you give a wrong answer, that is fine. Anybody? What is capital budgeting? You can see the screen. Uh, how much a company is willing to uh, spend on a particular project or something probably is called budgeting because that's what it means in general. So investment, right? It is related to yeah. utilization of fund and investment. The allocation in, of capital. Yeah. Allocation of capital to what kind of asset? Current asset or fixed asset? It helps. Hmm? It's Current a asset fixed or... asset decision. Yeah. Basically, it is the fixed asset investment decision, the utilization of fund. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what about the capital structure? What do we mean by capital structure? Deciding about what? It uh, talks about the debt and equity used by a company. Yeah. Uh, From where will we be sourcing our funds? from where the company will get the funds okay uh, and how much from which sources all from equity or maybe 80% uh, from equity and 20% from long term debt okay this is the capital structure the structure of capital types of capital and allocation of capital uh, so not allocation structure of capital okay and what about the third one working capital management what is that it talks about effectively using the current assets of the company. Working capital mm -hmm. is like short term uh, right. assets. And also liabilities and also liabilities. Okay. Yes. So a perfect capital... balance of yeah. assets and right. liabilities. Yeah. Yeah. So actually in capital structure and capital budgeting, we do not include the current asset and current liabilities. Both current asset and liability, current liabilities are jointly managed in, in uh, within the working capital management area. Okay, so these are the three basic areas of uh, finance actually. Okay, could I make it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you have got quite, uh, uh, quite uh, you know, considerable idea about the financial management things. Uh, now uh, we want to, I want to introduce you with the Excel software, okay? So how many of you have, you already have a very good exposure in Excel? I think that you have already done your accounting course in Excel, right? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Like basics, we know, sir. Okay, 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 okay. 
So you already know the basics. So basics are not going to take much time. So what I will do, I will open the Excel file and share it, you know, and discuss all of us, not only me, all of us, you know, about the basics. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, tell me, can anybody tell me about the basic structure of an of a Excel workbook? Actually, a workbook is the uh, is the complete file where uh, we keep our data, where where the spreadsheets are uh, organized, structured, and all these things. Okay, so in in one Excel workbook. What do we have? What are the things that we have? Basically, we have one or more worksheets. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So you can see by default, whenever you open a new Excel workbook, uh, you will see that there is, uh, by default, there is one uh, worksheet. Uh, and sometimes you also have three worksheets, sheet one, two, and three, depending on the version of the Excel. Okay, so if you have one worksheet, it is very, if you are not happy with only one, you can very easily create another one by clicking the plus here, you know, clicking the plus here as many uh, worksheets you want, you know, and if you don't want, you can right click and delete. Okay, right click and delete. So the whole worksheet will be deleted. So in one workbook, there are one or more what? one or more work sheets, right? So easy, right? And in, in, in a particular worksheet, in a particular worksheet, it is, uh, it is structured in rows and columns. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. It is structured in rows and columns, and which is very easy to understand. You know, many of us, when we have attended our primary school or kindergarten school, uh, you know what happened we used to stand you know during the assembly we used to stand in columns or rows which one rows yeah rows or column whatever you say actually we used to stand one behind another and one beside another so this is a kind of arrangement you know where we can differentiate the rows and columns so in Excel, we have the columns titled as A, B, C. This is, a, this is a way of numbering the columns. Okay, this is column number A, column number B, column number C, column number D, and so on. And this is the row number one, row number two, row number three, and so on. And we have so many columns and so many rows. I don't remember how many columns we have and how many rows we have, uh, but we have so many that we uh, we never are you know we usually cannot finish you know all the columns by keying in all the data or copying all the data or rows you know that is very rare that we have uh, we have run out of rows or columns i have i was running out uh, once upon a time during my phd when i uh, do my data analysis I was running out of columns because there are fewer number of columns than the number of rows. Do you know that? Number of column is not as many as the number of rows, okay? So uh, it might happen. Sometimes you might feel shortage of columns. Anyway, so we have so many rows and columns and every box, you know, you can see every place in the worksheet can have an address. Uh, do you understand? Every box here is called a cell. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Okay. So every cell can have an address by mentioning its row number and column number. For example, the cell that I have selected, let me make it bigger. The cell that I have selected here, you know, what is the row number of this cell? 12. And what is the column number? Yeah. F. F. So we can, we can call it cell F12, uh, column number first, then row number. And you can see the address here, you know, F12. 
okay d9 g13 you don't have to count actually you can see it very quickly here in this corner name box every cell can have a name so uh, or uh, address you know so if you click the cell you will see the address here d20 k16 you know m6 very quickly tell me what is the name of this cell g19 g19 okay very good so this is how we can actually uh, look at the rows and columns and cells. So why do we need to learn Excel? I have already mentioned that Excel is a very powerful tool uh, for manipulating that data, for arranging the data, for uh, you know visualizing the relationship uh, inherent in the data, right? This is why we are uh, going to use the uh, Excel in our financial analysis. Hmm. So uh, there are different other things that we must know. I think all of you know already. Anyway, we need to discuss that. So let's say, let me write uh, my name here, okay? So this is my name. What you can do, you can definitely change your font, just like Microsoft Word. You can click here and change the font to a newer one, new font. I hope that you can understand that, right? So that can help you to make your spreadsheet more uh, presentable, okay? More presentable, better looking. So uh, that can be useful. You can also increase the size of the font. Uh, you can decrease the size of the font of your uh, chosen size. You can uh, very quickly increase or decrease using these uh, buttons. Okay, quickly increase or decrease. You can change the color, make it red or make it uh, yellow. Okay, make it blue, whatever you like. You can shade the cell. Shading is very useful. Shading and coloring is useful when you are dealing with a very big set of data. I know sometimes you want to highlight some of the cell. Maybe you want to re-examine the calculation or whatever. You know, in that case, sometimes we use the shading. Let's say we keep it in yellow for our future reference. So these kind of things can happen. We can also use the border. You know, let us select this cell. Uh, 100,000, okay? So uh, uh, this is 200,000 200, total. We'll see the formula later, no, just now. Amount, serial, one, two. Total. So this is a very small table, but if you want to make it more presentable, uh, you can change the alignment. Like you can see that uh, serial and uh, these are not aligned properly. So you can make all them, all of them centered. Uh, you can change the uh, size of the uh, column. It, if you double click, it will uh, it will automatically adjust its size to. Uh, to accommodate the content okay uh, you can uh, if you want you can also increase from here click here and drag it to the right or left to increase or decrease the size total you can actually make it in this side amount uh, to align with the number you can change the alignment okay you can use the border for example serial and amount you, you'd want to have a uh, border bottom border, you can click it and you will see that it has a bottom border. You also want to have a bottom border here. You can do that. You Let's say you want to have a double uh, bottom border, border, so you can have it here. Hmm. In this way, you can make it bold and italic. Okay, these are very easy. You know, don't laugh. Uh, I think you are laughing at the class because it is so easy class, right? No, sir. You can also use a box border, you know, thick box border. There are so many things to do. 
you can also use custom border let's say you want to have a dotted border uh, in in this place so what you can do you can click here and go to more borders or custom borders depending on the version of your uh, software so here uh, like you can choose a different color let's say red color uh, it, and a dotted border like this and you only want the middle borders to be like that you can click okay and it's fine it become like that you know not only that if you do not want you can actually uh, withdraw this grid view you know you can check box here and you can see all those disturbing grid lines are gone okay but sometimes the grid lines are very useful at uh, at least when you are really doing your analysis after uh, the analysis is done then probably you can think of deleting the grid box and all this thing. grid lines and all this thing okay uh, what else i am supposed to discuss alignment font border okay let me do the easy things today grouping the worksheet moving copying deleting and hiding worksheet okay rows and columns cell range okay by the way uh, you can uh, let us bring the grid line back so that we can understand the things clearly well so let's say uh, we have another item here this is two this is three okay, let's say we want to uh, delete this number two item hmm. only this item but we don't want, don't want any effect uh, or to the right or to the left so what we can do select this two select this two right click and then press delete and the dialog box will ask you after deleting do you want the cells shift cells up that means the bottom cells to go up or uh, you want to delete the entire row or you want to delete the entire column or you want to delete a shift the cells left so let's see what happened one by one so if we click shift cells left what will happen what will happen can you tell me the cells will move to the left yeah these two will be deleted and these two cells will take this place hmm. okay so you can see that the empty cells has taken the place to make it clearer let us uh, type in something here a okay, so now i'm doing it again delete shift cells left okay so you can see the left items will take the place hmm. let me uh, undo uh, you know you can click here you can click this uh, button to for uh, for undoing anything hmm. or you can you can do you can you can use command z actually this is shortcut we will talk about the shortcuts later no problem hmm. So uh, now let us do another thing. Let's select this one, right click, delete, shift cells up. So what will happen? Now the bottom cells will uh, go up and replace the previous one and uh, the right cells will not have any impact. So let me press undo and go to back to the original one. Again, right click, delete, enter row, then what happens? If we select entire row, then the whole row will be deleted. Deleted, okay? Will will be uh, uh, gone away, including any content on that row. So be careful when you delete the things. If you select entire entire column, then what will happen? <laughs> the any uh, you know any column within this range will be delete, deleted. So let's see entire column. So which column will be deleted now? Can you tell me? I have selected B11 and C11. So B and C both will be deleted columns. 
Okay, you see, all has gone. Yeah. Previous columns has done, gone, but A and B are there because that was the next column. Hmm. This is about deleting. Now insert, hmm. let's say uh, we select anywhere, right click and insert. So same thing happens. If you insert one cell, then the Excel is asking you, you want to shift the cell to the right or down, or you want to insert the entire row or entire column. Now let's start with entire column. So if you click okay, then you see one column has been inserted here. Okay, again, if you click insert, entire row, then entire row will be inserted on top of that one. Okay, now again, if you click and insert, shift cells right, then what will happen? One cell will be inserted there and the, all the uh, data will go one step to the right because we have selected only one cell. Get it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think all of you already know all this thing, right? Now let me show you another thing. I'm deleting everything from the worksheet. Okay, uh, let me produce a hypothetical data set. Remember, you can very easily, you can actually autofill, you know, the data. Because we want the serial number, so it will always be one, two, three, four. So if we fill in two uh, 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 top cells, and then after selecting both, if we uh, drag from the corner, then it will fill the uh, serial number. Then, then it will uh, fill the series actually. You know? Like if you instead, if you type two, then four, okay? And now if we drag from the corner, then what will happen? It will be two, four, six, eight, uh, this way. If we Multiples type- of two. Yeah, right. If we type January, February, you know, Excel will automatically recognize the series. The months. Yeah, months. So it will be March, April, May, June, July, and so on. Okay. Then if you type Saturday, Sunday, Excel will automatically recognize it. Do you understand? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So let's say. Hmm. Now let me replace it by 2018, something like that from the opposite, okay? You can see Excel automatically recognizes this series. Uh, then what else do you want? Year, huh? 2020, 2000. 15, 10, 5, and so on. Okay, so let's say that uh, heading of this one is serial, and this is something like amount, we don't know amount of what, you know, month, then day, then year. And let us do some manipulation. Uh, actually, you know, while doing, let me teach you also. You can actually drag certain cells uh, to another place. So select the num uh, select the range of cells, and then bring your cursor uh, when it becomes like a hand. You know, then drag it anywhere and the data will move there. Hmm. Do you understand? Yes. And again, bring, now I'm, I'm just rearranging and also teaching you how to drag data. Because after a few minutes, I'll show you how to sort. So 
so I'm actually dragging to fit in in the same table. And not only that, uh, I will copy this again. So select it and control C, or you can also use the uh, under home, this is the copy button or from edit copy. Okay, control V. So I'm increasing the whole thing. So we have got 48 items. Uh, this is a quite good amount of information to show you sort and filtering. I don't need this one, two, three, four rows. So right click and delete the rows. And not only that, uh, because I don't want uh, the these columns B, C, D, and E to have different column width, rather I want them to be uh, equally distributed. So what we, we actually have different ways of doing that. But the way I, I usually use is select the columns, and right click and select the column width and try different column width that suits. Let's say if it is 20, then how it looks. It is quite big. So let me make it 10 column width, 10. Uh, now it looks better, isn't it? Or we can also make it uh, a little smaller like eight okay now it looks good because all columns are now equal and serial also we can increase a little bit to make it better looking ah. now uh, now i'm going to show you uh, how to sort data hmm. how to sort data so if you want to sort data then what you should do you should select the whole table Do you know what is sort sorting? You know the meaning of sorting, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So after selecting the whole table of data, then you can see here uh, under home uh, ribbon, you can see sort and filter. So usually I always prefer to use the custom sort because it provides you several options. So I have taken custom sort. Uh, now, the first thing you should look and check is uh, this checkbox. My list has headers, okay? You know, when I have selected, I have selected the whole table that includes the serial amount, month, day, year, uh, you know, this uh, uh, heading. So because it has headers, so I have, uh, it is okay to have this checkbox checked. But if we clear it, then, Excel will uh, sort including that header header row, and that will not be good. So I'm selecting header, and then I will give command based on what it will be sorted. So let's say we want to sort it based on year. Let, let us see, select year, and also sort on what value or color or icon or whatever. So normally we do it based on value. And if we want to do it smallest to largest, or largest to smallest, you know, 
So we, we prefer it to be smallest to largest. So click OK. And you see that all the 1975 values are on the top, then 1980s, then 1985, and so on. Okay, and all other things are adjusted accordingly. Have you understood how to sort it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now uh, we have some other options. Let me undo it and keep it as it was. Again, select the table. Now, let me go to sort and filter again. Custom sort, my list has headers. Now we can actually do uh, multiple criteria. We can actually set multiple criteria, like first sorting will be based on year. Then if we click plus here, then there will be another criteria. For example, we have several values of 1975. So what will be the next level of sorting? You know, how the 1975 values will be sorted? So we can choose uh, by month, you know, in that case, it will at first be sorted based on year and then it will be sorted based on month. Okay, we can add another criteria like after month, it will be sorted based on day. And after that, amount. it will be sorted based on amount. Okay. So the smallest to largest, A to Z, smallest to largest, largest. What happened? Let me check it again. Custom sort. Hmm. Hmm. I probably I have pressed cancel accidentally. Anyway, so you can see at first it is sorted by year. Then it is sorted by uh, month. Actually, all are uh, all 1975 are because when we insert the data, actually we uh, insert the year in the same field of September. Okay, so here the data is like that. Okay, so effectively it is done in this way. At first, the year is sorted. Then, if we have more, then we, if we have more. Uh, because all the uh, all the years are all all of the data of year seventy five uh, contains the month September. This is why no effective sort has taken place. But let us change it. You know, if we change it, let's say uh, this is in January. Uh, this one is February. Hmm. This one is December. Now we will do the sort again, and we will see if that one is done properly. Sort and filter, custom sort, and we're not going to change it. We just press OK. Okay. Custom sort at first year, then month. Then day, then amount. Okay. Now you see all the 1975 now has been uh, rearranged uh, because we have asked to alphabetically sort it. So December has got the first letter because we don't have any month uh, with A, B, C. We have a, a, a starting with D, then we have February starting with F. And then J, then S. So these are alphabetically rearranged. You know, have you understood any question? Any question? Are you in the class or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We understood. Okay. Now, uh, and now we uh, we want to know how to filter data. You know, actually, if you want to filter it, then you have to click here and just click filter. So what will happen, you know, you will see a drop down uh, in all the column headings, you know. For example, if you want to see 
initially, you know, by default, all will be checked. If you want to see only the values of Sunday, you know, then what you'll do, select uh, uh, uncheck all and click Sunday and then click, okay, auto apply is there. It will automatically apply to some, in some versions of Excel, you have to press okay. So you see that only the, only the items with Sunday are here. And, and you can see a filter uh, icon here so that you can understand that it is filtered based on this one. Again, if you want to apply multiple filter, like uh, you want all the values of Sunday and you want the values of only 2000, okay, then you have to select only 2000. Okay, then it will be like this. Hmm. Let's say you want the values of uh, uh sorry let us clear the filter so we have all filters cleared now let's say you want the values of 1990 95 and 80 and all the values containing the months January, uh, August and May. Okay, then you can clearly filter the data in this way. Hmm. That is often very useful in doing the analysis. Okay, clearly, clearly understood or not? Yes, I understood. Another thing I want to show is Conditional formatting, although it is not in your syllabus, but it is very useful. So I want to show you this one. So we have got all the data here. You can select. And you can actually apply conditional formatting from here. So what you can do, you can select all the values. So let, let us select only one column first. This one, the amount column. So conditional formatting. And you can select a rule, you know, you can select a new rule from here. So what you can do, you can, uh, yeah, I don't want to do that. Conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. You want to highlight the cells that are less than 10. Okay, so what you see, you uh, just select the less than 10 and put it here, 10, less than 10. So any value that is less than 10 will have a light red fill with dark red. You can change it, uh, but that is up, up to you. Uh, I prefer it to be like this. So you can see all the values with, uh, you know, all the values that are less than 10 are marked uh, red colored. You know? This is how you can actually apply the conditional formatting. Okay. So I think uh, for today being it, it, uh, the first class, uh, I think we can uh, wrap up now. So if you have any question, we can go for a question and session now. If you are not- uh, Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, I have a doubt. Uh, can you go back to the Excel sheet, please? Sure, sure. So the one where you uh, did individual for year, like to show year 1995, how did you do that in the beginning? Can you show? Uh, uh, filtering, right? Yes, sir. So you have to click the, uh, you know, year column heading. 
Then if you want only 1990, you know, at first clear all the selection. No, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I understood this. What I didn't understand is how to bring this uh, filtering uh, on the ear thing, ear cell. Oh, the, the first, first thing that I have done, right? Yes, sir. The first step. No problem. So at first I have cleared the filtering. You know, if you check here, it will clear the filtering. Do you understand? Okay. Now, if you want to apply filtering, you have to select the table for which you want to filter. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Select first. Then you have to click sort and filter and then click filter. Okay, then it will automatically bring, give you the option to filter. Okay, have you understood? Yes, sir, understood. Again, you know, if I clear the filter by clicking here, the filters are gone. Now you cannot click any drop down here. Okay, now I'm going to select the table again. go up okay you can see there is no filter icon yet so if you click here and then click filter now you will get the option to filter very easy hmm? okay yes sir understood thank you any other question Okay, mm -hmm. Prakoti Shuva has written, can you share the course outline and the PPT in the group? Yeah, I will do. I will do that. Uh, actually, I will share that in the WhatsApp group and also I will send it to upload in the Moodle. And, and not only that, I will also create a Facebook group. But if you want, you can join that. If you don't want, you, you might not join that. I'll also try to send you any soft copy of the textbook in the WhatsApp group, okay? Sure, sir. Thank you. So if you don't have any other question, uh, then I will proceed to the uh, conclusion. Uh, that means we'll go. Uh, so there was a question in the chat box. I think you skipped it. It was from Varush. Uh, okay. Can we make Excel as a carrier? Was his question. Or was it a question? Yes, so that was his question. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So Varush, uh, yeah, uh, Excel uh, itself alone, uh, it, it actually Excel is a tool, you know, a tool is not a carrier, but you, if you can effectively use the tool for analyzing financial data or analyzing marketing data or analyzing different types of data, uh, then it can be your carrier. You know, it can help you in your career. Excel itself, if you want to make it a career, probably you'll have to go for Microsoft certification, all this, that, that is related to IT. But you have to look into the applied side. You know, if you become a very expert in Excel, uh, then you can apply it for in various disciplines, you know, analysis. So uh, and financial analysis, uh, statistical analysis, there are many other type of analysis. But remember, nowadays we have even more sophisticated tools, you know, so if you want to make Excel uh, as a key attraction of your profile, you know, I would not say that it is your career. I would say that it can be your, uh, it can be your, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, differentiating factor, you know, that will lead the uh, recruiter to select you instead of another person. Why? Because that person is qualified. You are also academically qualified, but you know Excel better. And you, you, you can be more helpful for, to the company, to the organization. Okay, this is why they will select you. you know? So uh, rather than saying that Excel itself alone will be sufficient for your career, I would rather say uh, Excel can really help you to become, to excel your career, excel in your career. Okay, so uh, you know, think in this way. Could I make it clear or I made it more, more complicated? 
Okay, let, let me tell you that you can actually learn the Excel in this course as well as in many other places. And then you can think about uh, financial modeling. You know, you can become a financial modeler uh, in, in Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can also go for professional certification. Like I know that uh, in, I was searching in the internet uh, that there are some financial modeling certification uh, which uses Excel as a tool of modeling. But not necessarily you have to confine yourself in Excel for, the whole, for, for your whole life. After a few years, you may find that there is a newer tool which is better than Excel. So you will just adjust yourself with the newer tool. That's all. You know, this is how you should progress. Any other question? And Varush Aladi, uh, uh, you can also ask the question um, uh, by, uh, you know, by directly speaking in your microphone. No problem with that. You know, students, please do not hesitate to speak out during the class. I always encourage the class to be a, you know, chaotic class. That means students will always speak out. Students will always interrupt me. They will always stop me during the discussion. Because they will ask very silly questions. Uh, I am happy with that. Our students will ask very stupid questions as well. Uh, very silly, very simple question. So you will be asking question. This is why you are the uh, student. You know? I'm, I'm talking to everyone actually. And I encourage you to ask uh, right question, wrong question, serious question, silly question, any type of question. Okay. So the class representatives, who are the class representatives? Uh, can you uh, speak out? Uh, sir, it's me, Pari, Vinila, Deepshika, sir. Okay, per, two or three, how many? Three of them, sir. Three of them, sir. Three, right? Yes, sir. Okay, Pari, Vinila, and... Uh, and uh, Deepshika. Deepshika, okay. So uh, can, uh, have you taken the attendance? Uh, yes, sir, I've taken the attendance. Oh, great. And, uh, uh, and probably I will be contacting uh, your university uh, about uploading the things in the Moodle and I will provide the, um, provide the course syllabus by today. Uh, definitely I will share it in the WhatsApp group uh, that will be a very quick way. And I will also do that in the Moodle. Uh, so uh, you, you will also be notified, no problem. So uh, anything else I can help you today with which I can help you? Okay, great. So thank you very much. Uh, by the way, Pari Vinila, can you tell me how the students can get the recording of the class? Uh, sir, till now we haven't, I mean, the recordings haven't been shared with us. So but the class is being recorded been... somewhere. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, this would be with the people who are having handling the data, but the recordings haven't been shared with us, if I'm not wrong. Right, Vanila? Yeah. So it is not shared. The management with... is being uh, recorded. Okay, management is recording, but they, they do not share with you, right? Uh, yes, sir. So... Maybe they would change that. We have no, uh, I mean, they haven't given us any information about that. So, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, so far I know you are supposed to keep your video on during the class, but I have noticed that only two or three students do that. Uh, others do not do. Uh, may I know the reason? Is it because you are not enjoying the class or what? No, sir, because of the internet issue. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, I don't think it's completely that. Uh, it could be network issues. Some are having power cuts. Some is uh, some are uh, joining the class because of mobile data. So if they on their camera, then they get disconnected. So there are he uh, many reasons. Yeah. So what is the uh, practice at your university? It is not. Is it mandatory or it is optional? at your end in the university, uh, is it compulsory to keep the video on or it is optional? Uh, sir, in the first year, it was mandatory, but this year, I mean, it depends from class to class. So we are not sure. Sir. 
Okay, okay, okay. But remember, during the assessment sessions, that means case study presentation and final assessment, uh, you must keep your video on. Otherwise, uh, it would not be possible to accept your submission and all these things. Okay. During the class, it's uh, I encourage you to keep it on. But if you have any problem, then it's fine. Uh, but during the assessment, that means like the case study and presentation, uh, and also the final assessment, every student must keep the video on, and you should have. Uh, the arrangement in advance okay is that okay yes sir yes okay thank you very much i will see you in the next class probably the next class is going going to be on the uh, coming wednesday right yes yeah. oh we are so not by this time, so. yeah by this time if you, if you have any question and if you have any query you can contact me uh, by whatsapp preferably or by email Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.